I want to look at the importance of snowpack, in particular the importance of snowpack to the animals that are living underneath it. To do this, let's go back to the Russians back in the 1920s and 30s. The Russians made an observation. There were all sorts of little animal tracks on the snow, but as fall turned into winter and the snow got deeper, they wouldn't find the small mammals coming up above the snowpack anymore. They found that depths of about 15 to 20 centimeters, or 6 to 8 inches, and animals didn't come up. So the question is, why do animals venture above the snowpack, or why do they stay underneath? And might insulation be of importance? Well, we've got a general snowpack model here, and we need to realize the snowpack model is made of layers. And each snowstorm initially creates a different layer, but over the course of the winter, layers may coalesce, and at any time during the winter, you'll have a varying number of layers, and each layer may provide different insulation. Now, if we were looking at a house, in a house, we have a wall providing its insulation, such as this right here, and the insulation is a product of thickness. The thicker the insulation, the thicker the wall, the thicker the insulation. We can measure that with a value we call the R factor. And we might have a wall that has an R factor of 18 or 20 or 24. And the insulation in between, that could be foam, that could be um, old fiberglass, it could be wool. But since all those trap about the same amount of air, they provide about the same insulation. Trapped air is insulation. We call it dead air because it can't move around within the little pores within the wool, the fiberglass, or the foam. So to know how well your house is insulated for the winter, you simply have to measure it. And that gives you an R factor. Well, we're going to calculate an R factor from the snow. The R factor for the snow we're going to call the thermal index. TI for short. And if we go out and we measure the snowpack, that's going to tell us an indicator of the insulation value of the snowpack. The thicker the snowpack, the more insulated it is, the better off you would be underneath. However, snowpack varies in density. More density, more water, more energy conducted out. So whereas insulation increases with thickness, it's going to decrease with density. If you've got a denser layer, uh, energy is conducted out faster. Being under that denser layer, you're not going to be as warm. So what we need to do is reduce our insulation value by density. We will take the thickness and we're going to divide it by the density. And for one layer, that will give us a value of thermal index for the layer. But different layers have different densities and thicknesses. So what we're going to have to do is calculate the density for each one of these layers. Now here's a point. We'll calculate a thermal index for every layer, and for each one of those layers, then we're going to add them together to get the total value for the whole snowpack. Let's look at an example here. Here's an example. We've got four layers of snow, and the top of the layers are 5, 20, 30, and 40. So the first thing we do is calculate the thickness. Thickness of layer number one on the bottom, that's only five centimeters. Then we got a 15 centimeter thick layer, a 10 and a 10. Each layer has different density, so what we want to do is calculate the value for, uh, the density value for each. We'll go in and we will sample that layer um, to get its density. So we sample all four layers, we get densities varying from light fluffy snow up at top at 0.11 grams per cubic centimeter, or 11% water. The layer, the second layer from the bottom is 30% water, a density of 0.3 grams per cubic centimeter. So our densities vary here from 11% water to 30% water. To calculate the thermal index, we take the thickness, we divide it by the density, and that top layer that's light and fluffy, it has a thermal index of 91. Whereas that thickest layer, but because it's so dense, its thermal index is only 50. To understand the whole snowpack, what we're going to do is divide the whole snow, or sum up the values for the whole snowpack of 221 for a thermal index. Let's take a look at what the temperature is doing in the snow. Here's a cross section of snow with the temperature profile on top, a good daytime temperature profile, and that temperature profile is um, warmer near the bottom, cold near the top in the snowpack, 
and then it warms up during the daytime. That warming up during the daytime causes that temperature profile to move through the snow. Okay, the question becomes at night, as the temperature is going to cold down, how long does it take that cold temperature to punch through down to the ground? So let's look at a night profile. The night profile, it's cooling down in the top and it's moving down. Now, if you give it enough time, say it was minus 40 for two weeks, that whole temperature profile would move to the left. But what we're going to ask the question is for one night. How long does it take to punch through, or more importantly, how much insulation will stop it from punching through over the course of, say, an eight-hour night? Well, if you've got a thermal index somewhere between 150 and 200, the value um, indicates that there's enough insulation there that over about an eight-hour night, even if it gets real cold on top, it, the cold won't punch through the ground. If you're a little animal underneath on the ground, everything's going to be okay. You don't get colder that night. Well, if we look at a thermal index for 15 centimeters of snow, and let's say that's new fallen snow, and it's early in the fall, it has a density of about 0.1 gram per cubic centimeter or 10 percent water. That's the old geographer's rule. 10 inches of snow melts to one inch of water, 10 to 1 ratio. Well, if you take 15, you divide it by 10, you get a thermal index of about 150. Go back to the Russians for a minute there. Now, the Russians said at about 15 centimeters to 20 centimeters uh, that the little animals were no longer moving around. Well, 15 to 20 at news fallen snow in the fall of 0.1, that's about a value of 150 to 200 for a thermal index. So it seems like when we get enough insulation in the fall, no longer do the animals come above the snow each night and go running around. Perhaps they're warm enough that they're not going out and looking for a warmer spot to be. Thermal index is a very important value for us because it's going to tell us the importance of a particular snowpack to the animals that are involved.